Hello, and welcome to toward, toward the end of OCP, third, second day actually, uh, and um, this exciting session on uh, memory character profiling within a large scale data center. And this presentation today, uh, we will uh, do uh, together, uh, my colleagues, uh, Stephanie Stickel, uh, she's a hardware analytics engineer at Meta. Uh, looks like uh, our <laughs> company name has not changed. <laughs> um, sorry about that. And uh, Jonathan, uh, a software engineer, and myself, Anil Agarwal. I am a hardware system engineer at uh, Meta. And so together we'll, we'll share what we have learned so far um, in this journey of uh, profiling a memory character. error. And we'll, we'll kind of walk through why we are doing that. So first thing is uh, we'll talk about the pain points of what we have been experiencing and um, why we are going through this uh, memory character profiling uh, project. <clears throat> and the EDAC, those who may be familiar with EDAC, is error detection and correction uh, Linux uh, driver. Um, we'll, we'll just recap on that and we'll go deeper into the memory character profiling itself, like what, how we are doing it and Stephanie will talk about that. And um, as we have uh, learned, and we start deploying this EDEC uh, driver to uh, learn about memory character at, at scale, uh, we are not gonna stop there. We want to continue to grow and, and develop more and more capabilities within the EDAC. So EDAC extension, so we'll talk about EDAC extension proposal that we're gonna share today. We haven't shared anywhere, anywhere so far. And Jonathan will talk about uh, what we are thinking about, it's not, work has not started yet, but we want to share about thoughts and get feedback, and we hope that collectively um, all of you will be able to participate and help us drive in, uh, run, uh, go through the journey. <clears throat> okay, so pain points. There's several pain points, but these are three pain points that we really kind of um, zoom in on. One is the system performance degradation. Whenever there's a hardware fault, right, we do not want any performance impact. Now, typically, for hardware faults would result into typically machine crash, right? But, which is fine because machine crashes, okay, we, machines crash, we, we have enough spare capacity. It, it affects our downtime, uh, other, area, other uh, metrics also. But at least we don't, we, we know the machine has crashed. The bigger problem we face is when machine has actually not crashed, but there are still errors, what we call correct errors. And if, especially if the correct errors are in, in behaving such a way that it impacts the performance, because a lot of corrections happening, the cycles, the compute cycle that should really be going into compute cycles is actually spent in doing just correction only. So those are actually bigger problem for us to solve, uh, and that results into system performance impact. So how do we solve that? Second one is, let's say we have a solution to monitor these corrected errors and preemptively, actively take the machine down uh, before it fails. Great, now, but the problem there is that if you're not careful and we are taking the action much faster, then that would, could result into taking the components and returning them to the vendor, uh, what we call uh, RMA, uh, which are actually not really failed, but it just was showing some indi indications and we took it out. So that what that happens is that results into what we call NTF, or notable found issue. And that actually uh, affects us, uh, our inventory level, as well as uh, a lot of churn in terms of getting the machine down, taking the component out, and then returning back, and then we find, hey, there's no problem here. So, um, we want to minimize that also. So there's a balancing act and the design uh, point that we need, to, we need to come up with. And uh, of course, the, the last one is uh, the failure mitigation at scale. What that means is that most of our, our uh, hyperscaler uh, customers and, and players, we have a heterogeneous fleet. From multiple vendors, different, different uh, family of products, and in that, when we are to deploy, when we are deploying a new system or even upgrading with the new features, how do we do it at scale? That's actually becoming another challenge for us. So, fault mitigation at scale is another challenge for us. 
So we need a solution that can really touch these three areas, and especially at least in the, and there's a, this is a shared problem, uh, therefore there has to be a shared solution also. Now this is, this is of course, uh, um, problems are common across all the hyperscaler cloud suppliers or uh, customers, um, but based on the implementation, like for example in the Meta, most of our, our deployment is uh, what we call vertically integrated, you know, we, we, have our own custom, we have our own customers. We don't have any kind of public cloud deployment as such. Whereas uh, the other cloud uh, you, uh, customers, uh, they have uh, public cloud deployment as well. So fault handling solution in, those, in that kind of model will, may look a little bit different. However, there are many customers like, like us who have a very similar kind of uh, deployment um, and so shared problem and then shared solution can be scaled across multiple uh, cloud deployment. <clears throat> so what we found is that in this software service model where we own a complete stack, EDEC based solution can touch and help in all these three pain points. EDEC is a Linux based driver uh, and uh, primarily for correctable errors and recoverable errors. It can detect, monitor, and we can develop the solutions to take preemptive action before any performance impact happens. So that's fairly good. If anytime we find any new improvement required, because it's a kernel based, we can deploy at scale very fast. Notable found, as long as we develop these algorithms to um, um, minimize the uh, probability that we can, we, we are uh, re replacing a DEM, like for example, memory DEM, uh, even though the DIM is, is still healthy, but it's just showing some intermittent uh, failure. So something like that te technology we can uh, develop at scale. And of course, uh, um, anytime there's a Linux driver or Linux uh, kernel update happens, it again can be scaled across the heterogeneous fleet because Linux kernel anyway is common denominator across all the machines. So it fits very well in our, model, in our deployment model so we are zooming onto that, and we are kind of uh, deploying this EDEC driver-based solution in our fleet, um, and con we'll continue to do that. Now, just to give, give you a, a quick uh, history behind EDEC. EDEC is something, I mean, we started using it and, and uh, actively uh, investing in this thing uh, fairly recently. However, uh, EDEC is, is, uh, is a very, um, a lot of history behind that. It started as a blue, blue smoke project uh, back in uh, 2003, and it was actually uh, um, developed by a lot of these uh, high, uh, large-scale cluster developers um, working on the research, uh, high, uh, Lawrence Lab type of uh, deployment, because in, in those deployments, uh, they really are not interested in any kind of uh, system management module coming in, SMI interrupts, they just want from the kernel uh, all that information so that they can make it, uh, take a decision and, and uh, troubleshoot problems faster. And we have a similar kind of situation in our uh, deployment as well, so it fits very well. So back in, uh, in 2019, uh, we uh, shared our uh, game plan uh, in the regional summit, uh, and um, that time, uh, kernel 5.5 uh, is where we uh, added, or Intel added, uh, this something called enhanced EDAC, or fine granular error information in the EDAC, which was very important for us to really use that. And uh, we started deploying that beginning of this year uh, with the kernel 5.6. And uh, today, first time, uh, we, want to, we would like to share some of the findings over the last, I would say, eight, eight months or so, what we are finding so far. Like, how, what is the type of memory errors we see, and uh, it's not just correctable error, correctable error itself. Within that, there's a different flavors of correct, correction. And um, what can we learn from there? <coughs> um, and then um, uh, EDEC has been, continues to continue to grow, evolve, and there's a new capability added in 5.15 uh, to clear the logs. And that's another trick part challenge we're finding that uh, uh, when it comes to reading, it's fine. We can do it through Linux, but when we want to Clear it means we have to write to it, write to the register. Uh, that is was not possible. 
So there's some more innovation has been hap has happened. We haven't deployed that yet, but this is something in the area we are exploring that in the future. So let's go deeper into memory character profiling. So when we wanted to understand, okay, what is out there? What is the baseline when it comes to memory character error um, behavior in a large fleet? And when, when we looked around, we really didn't find much of the information out there in the, in the industry, which is kind of very surprising because you know, the problem is so um, fundamental and it has been there from day one, but uh, it's not been really shared very well um, in the industry about the learnings and the kind of profile. There were some research, it's, it's kind of a research topic. Uh, there are several PhDs actually, uh, uh, students have uh, invested and, and worked on it but at a, at a very large scale industrial level, uh, we couldn't find much data except this paper that was published by uh, Google. Uh, it's a IEEE Spectrum uh, uh, article where they compared um, their data with uh, these uh, labs, Lawrence Lab uh, large cluster. <clears throat> and uh, but there's a very limited information that we can gather from here. For example, um, within the memory characters, um, the same address, that means some sort of persistent error is, has a large com contribution. And the transient errors, which is like isolated error or scattered position, is, uh, has, a very, has a literally less contribution. So this is some one thing that they were, they, in, in this paper they talked about. Whereas we'll share today, our finding is slightly different. And, and, and we'll, we'll talk about that. So let me first walk through, because the amount of data that we are collecting across the whole fleet is so huge, there has to be some methodology to take the data and then parse it and develop some sort of structure behind that. So the EDAC, if you look at uh, uh, an example uh, driver, the way it takes the data from the uh, CPU, the memory character data, it's just a ASCII string text format, right? Uh, I kind of blocked out actual data by putting XXX uh, because that's not really relevant. But if you look at like EDAC MC1, 1CE memory read error, what that means is there is a one character error during the read detected. And then there's all kind of information about, uh, you know, what is the channel, what is the DIM ID, uh, what was the page address offset, so and so forth. <clears throat> so there's a lot of data here, a lot of information. Uh, but it's just a text string. So what we did first, first step is to take this data and then uh, create a more of a structured data by converting multiple columns. So billions of rows, but only one column that we translated into billions of rows with hundreds of columns. Okay, so that became the, our first data, data set. Um, and then we looked into the actual um, all the columns and the properties, and then start uh, distinguishing uh, some patterns. And then based on our uh, understanding, we define like a random multi-bit error. So do we see random multi-bit error in the data? Uh, do we see a random single-bit error? Uh, do we see persistent single-bit error? So and so forth. And, and this, so once we started doing that, then we start seeing a much more clear picture of what is going on in our fleet over time. And how, are there any correlation, let's say with something that we have not done yet, but there's something we want to continue to work on that, is, is any correlation with the temperature or altitude. And there are several other parameters that can be studied here. There's only limited study we can do. Um, at least my thought process is that uh, over time, we want to take this data set, sanitize it, and share for research purpose uh, in open space also. But that's something down the road, nothing has been announced anything in public yet. <clears throat> now, this is good. This is the methodology we came up, came up. The actual implementation of how to do that is uh, in itself is engineering efforts and, and requires a lot of uh, analytics. And that's where uh, Stephanie, who is our data analytics uh, uh, working in, in uh, Meta, came and, and started, uh, helped us in actually doing the, the fun part of uh, implementing it and then looking into the dashboard 
and then uh, trying to come, so come up with some uh, understanding of, uh, understanding of the, how the data looks like and what kind of different pattern we are seeing. So I will hand over to Stephanie to talk about exactly how we went through and uh, analyze this data. Thank you, Anil. Yep. Um, so as Anil mentioned, we have all of this uh, text data where we parse it into different uh, categories. And from there, we then define further uh, different error categories. So up here, we have a few of the single bit errors, uh, random or transient versus persistent, where a single bit continually uh, encounters these errors in the logs. Uh, we also have random multiple bit errors, and then we further break it down into persistent row and persistent bank. Uh, and these are all defined using the different syndromes, the row addresses and the column addresses. Uh, and you can see an example on the side um, of the screen uh, of some of these errors. We also have a single DQ error, which all the bits in the error are in the same DQ. And then we have a further catch-all, which is the block, whole device, burst, and other error categories that we can break down further. Um, and now here's the actual fun part, the uh, findings that we actually found in our data. So you can see it broken down. Um, we have a bit more granular data than uh, what the industry Google um, paper posted. Uh, but what we found out was that the transient or random errors accounted for about 50% of all of our memory correctable errors. And a few other findings uh, that we came up with were that uh, the persistent single bit errors can be mitigated by page offlining rather than swapping an entire DIM. And in the same thread, row persistent errors can be mitigated by the post package rep repair flow. And using this data, we can actually debug these vendor specific issues with our vendors at scale. So we can bring this data to our vendors and work with them on a solution. And now I will hand it over sure. to you, Jonathan. Thank you, Stephanie. Yeah. Thank you. So there's a lot of efforts went in to really um, um, build the queries and analyze the data, such a large scale of data. I mean, just to give you kind of a scale, uh, right now I think we have about 10 billion rows of data, um, and it's growing. It's growing every day, right? Um, because um, even though the error seems to be like, you know, it's not like a very common phenomena, but when we look at such a large scale, we do see lots of errors every day. And to, to collect all this data and then start analyzing is, is a pretty massive task here. Um, so memory character error profiling, something that we have started. And uh, what we share today, is actually we have not shared so far. This is the first time we are sharing the, uh, the, some of the statistics. Um, and uh, this is based on the past about eight, eight months, roughly eight months of data. And uh, what another thing we are finding is that the data is not static. It means uh, that this percentage doesn't stay same uh, every day. Um, so we continue to study that and see more and more uh, patterns, and then we'll we'll figure out a way to share actual data itself down the road. Now, with the success that we got so far by deploying this EDEC extensions, we want to learn from this and then take it to the next level. Can we do more? Can we bring, can we monitor different other errors that we have not been monitoring so far? So with that, we, we uh, came up with this EDEC extension proposal. Again, first time we are sharing that. Uh, and uh, if you look into our uh, wiki, you'll get a little more details. Uh, but then, but actual work has not started yet. This is just still proposal. And uh, Jonathan, our hardware engineer, really has been, the software engineer has been uh, focusing on, on that. So I'll hand over to Jonathan to talk about uh, what's our thinking right now. Thank you. So, um, so yeah. So this is a proposal that uh, we think it makes sense to extend the capability of EDAC driver to capture additional errors. Right? As mm, what I mentioned is that um, there are some error types like the. Um, some error types, corrected error types, are not captured by EDAC driver. And we also want to add the PCIe corrected error types. So on the tooling side, um, so the, once the, how the EDAC driver is able to handle those additional error types, uh, we need to improve the OS tool side. 
so that um, we can uh, be more effective when we switch to the OS first mo model um, for the uh, correctable errors. So in future, we could, so that's about error detecting and connection, but we actually want to move further in future is to do the OS first ROS action. That something happened, we trigger PPR from the, from the corner. Um, so this is an industry effort. So um, it's not a problem of Meta alone. So uh, we would want to develop the requirement and specs together with the industry under the uh, OCP umbrella um, to, to work with the industry to solve this problem together. Um, so the existing EDAC locks coverage has those in the blue box. But we want to add the command and address parity error. So we found that this is something important to us because it does happen um, in a not uh, infrequent basis. Uh, the workflow would be we add the uh, OS first handling for the memory corrected in addition to uncorrected but the recoverable error that the OS was be able to recover and is able to continue on. Um, the workflow would be the firmware when it boots up, it configures in, in terms of x86, configures the CMCI to be triggered instead of SMI so that for the correctable errors. Um, and uh, it also, so that when error happens, CMCI will be fired instead of SMI and then EDAC driver will capture it. Um, the host firmware also configures the interrupt policy um, and then the EDAC driver does its work to detect the, uh, the, the error and to classify the error. Um, on the PCIe side, uh, on the left hand side is the PCIe corrected error. On the right hand side is uncorrected but non fatal error. Uh, so we would uh, want to add the capability in the EDAC driver to report those PCIe errors. So this is the last slide, it's a call to action. So again, we want to work with the industry, right? work with other hyperscalers, work with the corner developers, work with the tool developers, and uh, we can um, develop the requirement specifications and uh, uh, we work together with Synergy to focus on the most important problem identified. Um, additional information can be found from the OCP hardware fault management sub-project wiki and also there's a uh, mailing list. Or you can contact three of us directly and uh, um, we look forward to working with you. Thank you, thank you. Mm -hmm. I think uh, we are open for any questions now. Uh, sure, please. Yeah, so you mentioned a lot of times you want to use the OS first solution. Is there any rationale behind that, why we want to use the OIS as we are doing a lot of auto band things? Very good question, yeah. So in the case where we own the whole stack, right, uh, operating system and the application, um, in order to take an, so monitoring we can do the auto band, no problem. But if you want to take any action, right, uh, using an auto band approach is just not scalable for us because the, the the bandwidth available from the VMC to the CPU is fairly limited. And therefore, what we want to do is we want to take the action at, at the host level. There are only two solutions today, either SMM or kernel-based. Most of the industry today uses SMM. We call platform first, right? But that just not uh, acceptable for us because that going into SMM, coming back, it just not scales for us. It's not, uh, it doesn't work for us because it, it has a lot of other impacts, performance, um, cases where back-to-back -back SMI result into crashes. Um, it's just too complex for us. And we, what we want to do is get it through the OS, through the kernel. So that's, that's, that's the one reason we, we are going, uh, moving ahead in this direction of OS first. Uh, thank you, just a follow-up question. Yep. But uh, using the OS first solution, doesn't that mean that we lose all the capability to monitor the uncorrectable errors. Uh, sorry, uh, can you repeat uncorrected? Yeah, uncorrectable Uncorrected. Yeah. So that's actually a very good point you mentioned and I didn't get a chance to clarify that. 
Remember, the most of the focus that we, we, we share today is corrected errors, memory corrected, PCI corrected. Even for the PCI uncorrected non-fatal are the errors where machine doesn't crash. Now, when it comes to uncorrected error that results into crash, we are still going to rely on SMM platform first. OS first is not going to work for us because once your machine crashes, only after reboot OS will may be able to pick the errors, but that's not really very uh, effective for us. So we will still use the platform first or even BMC based method. For example, the crashes where even SMM may not run because they got stuck somewhere. In that case, the, like crash, auto, auto runs crash time, Intel has developed that technology. We are deploying that. Uh, and we'll continue to grow in the direction of develop, uh, deploying crash dumps, BMC based. So that's all our roadmap. Okay. Thank you. Uh, okay, so I think uh, we are out of time now, but we are going to be here and maybe step outside and feel free to ask more questions.